Hey everyone, it's Lisa. And I wanted to share a few of my process videos. So this one is going to be a series of videos. Um, it's kind of a build upon the hibiscus ones that I have done previously on my channel. Um, but this time it's actually going to be using, there is some dried hibiscus in here. Um, just, you know, maybe two tablespoonfuls, I would say, in some hot water in a metal heavy duty aluminum foil pan that I use specifically for dyeing papers. Um, the other thing you're gonna need is a pair of gloves to protect your hands. Because as you can see, I was doing green already and I really don't need purple added to that. So that's gonna be fun to get off later. The other thing I have is a variety of papers to dye and I'll go through those as I put them in. And then I have what I am using to get a, like a stencil effect on my papers is plastic coated or plastic cut out placemats. Now I did find a bunch on Amazon and actually they came in sets of six, which is nice because I was able to keep four and actually use on my um, table. Uh, I have like cloth placemats down, but then I've got the really pretty plastic ones and you'll see them as we go through just on top. Um, but other than that, um, the other thing you'll need, and I found this on Amazon as well, you can by all means use just regular um, standard colored food process or food process, food colors from the store. However, to get more variety and to play up with the intensity and deepness of the colors that you choose, I kind of recommend that you go on Amazon and you get this set. Um, when I bought this, there was a $5 off coupon. I think I paid like, I don't know, $6.99, $7.99 for it. But there are actually 24 uh, different colors in it. And you can see they're small bottles, but truthfully to do one whole thing, um, one whole pan of papers, you really only need what amounts to the contents of one bottle but you're not gonna use a whole bottle of one color in there, if that makes sense. So let's just get started because like I said, this is step number one. And the only thing I have in here now, like I said, is extremely hot water from the tap and about two tablespoons full of dried hibiscus. Now I actually have dried hibiscus flowers but you can also use uh, like hibiscus, if it's just plain hibiscus tea, you can empty out the tea bags and use those as well. It'll kind of give you that pinky color and you'll see that it changes color kind of in the, um, in the oven. So first thing I'm going to glove up, like I said, I don't need to have an entire rainbow on my hands and I'll be able to get the other, the green off a little bit later when I get done doing this. But for now, to show you the correct way, and so you don't end up with really fun colored fingers, um, is to use these. Okay, so for colors, I have chosen out of there, what I'm going for is going to be like a violet, like a between a deep, purple with a hint of blue in it. So the colors I selected out of the food coloring is this one is navy blue, this one is grape purple, and this one is incense purple. I have no idea. I've never heard of incense purple before, but that coupled with a hibiscus, I don't really know what we're going to get. I've never tried this combination, so it'll be fun for both of us. Um, and you'll see everything as we go through the steps. So we're gonna start with a great purple and I'm probably gonna use most of the great purple in here. Um, it looks like a lot, but you have to remember this is not like writ dye or something. This is actual watercolor, which, you know, gets watery looking. This is the incense purple. 
And then we're gonna throw in some of the navy blue, like two squirts of that. All right, and at that point, I'll set these over here. You're gonna see the variety of things that I have picked to, to make the, um, make the colors on here. So what I'm gonna start with first is my heaviest paper because that's gonna be closest down to the bottom, which is obviously that's gonna get hotter than anything else. So you want a pretty sturdy paper. And what I'm actually starting with is watercolor paper. So I'm gonna put a sheet of that down and before I mush everything down, you're gonna see I'm gonna kind of set everything on top first. Um, what I'm gonna start with is I took one of the larger uh, plastic thinner placemats and I cut the little squares apart on here. So I'm gonna lay those in here and you really don't have to be precise with this because you know, what is there precise about journaling or anything craft wise? Nothing. So I'm gonna put another sheet of the watercolor on top. And again, it's just gonna float there. This time I'm gonna opt for, I've got like four of these uh, silicone, whoop, <laughs> silicone trivets. So I'm gonna put one of those on top just to see what we get. Um, and obviously you're gonna see this in stages so we're not gonna have the finished one done tonight because, but I'll tell you the steps in between that I do. This is 32 pound copy, um, or 32 pound, yeah, copy paper. I'm gonna put that on top. So hopefully it picks up the bottom from that trivet. We're gonna use some more of these squares that I cut apart. This is kind of sort of like echo dying for the fact that you don't really know what you're gonna get unless you're using, unless you measure everything out. And frankly, even when I cook, I don't measure. It always turns out good or edible or excellent. So I figure it's gonna be the same way with this. It's gonna be either good or great. So, you know, I guess it all just depends on how we, how we play this out here. Um, now I'm gonna use, I am gonna take a larger round doily and first I'm gonna lay it in. By the way, if you wanna learn how to do it the really neat and I call it professional way um, with coffee dyeing, um, my bestie Dawn at the Book Vandal Shop has a really good video for using these and other ones, she's actually the one that got me this and the small square ones um, that were large before I cut them apart, but she already knows about that, it's okay. Um, anyway, uh, she's got a video up that shows you how to do coffee dyeing and getting gorgeous lace effects, and I've used her papers a lot in my journals, but it's kind of fun to play with some color, and I know that this journal that I'm working on next, not this one, is going to be, um, well, it's gonna be like a darker celestial theme. So I figure purple will go pretty good. And I'm doing a really lousy job at centering that, but like I said, it's okay. So I've got the flaps kind of sticking out on the side, but that's with intent. So now I'm gonna put the next one on like that. And we're gonna fold this over and then you'll get like partial on this side, which is kind of cool. And this one, see, that's why I didn't center it very good, but it's okay. And get that stuck down there, there. And next I'm gonna take a little bit heavier paper too. This is on um, like, a heavier presentation paper and it's actually a digital that I have but it's real light in color and I thought it'd be fun to play with the colors of it so I'm going to put that on top and what am I going to use next I'll try some more of the square doilies and then we'll get into the really big ones that I ordered from Amazon that are super fun 
So just keep layering and stacking. Again, it's, you know, it's kind of the same process layering and stacking as it is with um, Echo Dying, except these aren't leaves. And speaking of Echo Dying, I pulled out some of my original Echo Dye prints that were kind of eh, and thought I would try to rejuvenate them in a different way. So we're gonna try and get some other colors on here. So since it's Echo Print, one of the placemats that I got is a huge circle and it's kind of got like a freeform leaf pattern in it. You're not gonna be able to fold this one over, but that's okay. So just lay it like that. And then I've got another one that's really blah. I think that was just coffee stained. I just had some left over and just stuck it on there. And then I'm gonna do, this is another placemat selection that I got. And this one is really pretty. This is like a big leaf. And these are really reasonable price too. So, you know, honestly, even if they were a little bit more costly, I'm using four of them on my dining room table and I'm using two exclusively for this. Um, they do wash perfectly clean, but I probably would not use them on my table once I've dyed them in here. Um, next thing I wanted to try, I have an old piece of sheet music. And you know, these are kind of brittle, but hopefully being careful in the oven and taking it apart, it won't be horrible. I hope. Um, and then I'm gonna use another one of these since that's like an old feel, um, you know, with the antique paper. Put that on there like that. And then let's take, this is another sheet that I did with just hibiscus um, and it's kind of blah. So I thought I would try that. And again, we're gonna wrap the leftover edges over the sides. And there, and there. And then I also wanted to try some parchment paper because I haven't tried that. Now, of course it should be darker in color on the parchment paper, but like I said, you never know. And I'm gonna use the other one of these on top. And these are thick enough and the other ones, well, we're not gonna be putting it in the oven at a high temp. We're only gonna be putting it in the oven at 250 degrees, but this is a little bit different than doing Echo Dye, uh, the boil method, or even um, the hibiscus that I used to do. So, it's a little bit different using the food coloring, which is a little bit more forgiving. So we're gonna do another sheet of the parchment. I've got another one of these leaf placemats. You know what, let's pull this one up. Let's do it this way. So I get more like that. And then we'll tuck that in. All right. We're getting near the end. Um, then I wanna do one of these cartouche shaped papers that I have. Lay that in there. And then this is the other, one of the other designs I got. And it's like, um, oh, I know there's a name for this shape, but anyway, we're gonna be doing this. <laughs> So get a little bit different something, and then let's see, one more piece of the um, Echo Dyed or the Hibiscus, and then one more of this, and then we'll get this sheet that I mucked all up when I dripped back and forth. So at that point, what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna push everything down, and I'm gonna make sure that the edges are all covered and I want this to sit here. But while it's sitting here, I want it to be under some weight. So what I have to make sure it's even pressure is I have a piece of wood um, that I've wrapped in aluminum foil 
and it fits my pan perfect. So it kind of pushes everything down at even weight. And then I've got a decorative um, rock here underneath um, that's flat. It's concrete. Oh, that's the flat side. I'm going to put that and kind of lay it on here. So then at that point, you really want to squeeze it down. And at this point, I'm going to say goodbye because this is just going to set for 20 minutes. After this, what I will do is I'm going to take it over to the sink. I'm going to hold all this down and drain off the excess. Um, I'm going to drain off the excess liquid and then I'm going to put it in the oven. And at that point, when I come back with part two, I'll tell you how long I had it in the oven and then we'll take it apart to see how everything turned out. So that is pretty much it for this part. And I will uh, finish up in a little while here. Bye.